Hey there, Drew. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, hello to anybody else watching. Uh, today, the first thing we'll be doing is working on the uh, electron microscope's high voltage tank. During the last data from show and tell, as the show and tell was going on, I kept having to turn the current up and up, even though I wasn't actually putting any more current through my filament, which is indicative of the power supply or the capacitors in the power supply or the voltage multiplier, more specifically, starting to experience a breakdown. So the microscope has to put more current into it just to start to kind of get some current out of it. Uh, and I also couldn't use anything above 2,000 volts accelerating. I should be able to go all the way up to 30,000 volts accelerating, uh, which is also another indica uh, indicator that I'm getting some current or some voltage leak through my capacitors. So those have to be replaced. And then just uh, to be cautious, I'm going to replace dads at the same time, because in Karkov Voltans, you can tend to put a lot, uh, when they start to fail, you can put a lot more power through a dial than it's designed to take. So uh, first things first. I've already pulled the high voltage tank it's sitting on the ground right there. I've got to pull the lid on that and then get it up on the workbench. I've got some foil down because it's filled with a, some transformer oil. And I have tested the transformer oil before with a, uh, first of all, a four-year transformer and for a, spectro or a spectrometer. And then I did a burn test on it. So I know it doesn't have PCBs in it. And I know it's at least relatively non-toxic, but I will be wearing gloves the entire time I'm touching this thing. So let's get started. Uh, let's see, first things first, let's get the drill out, or get the drill configured. So there's nine screws in this thing that hold the lid on. This is not my first, I got gloves on. Uh, this is not my first time digging into this power supply. Definitely happened before. Yeah, definitely feels gross. Definitely transformer oil. Not the best stuff in the world. Oh, I mean, okay, it's, it's pretty great stuff. Um, it's better than having to use some uh, something like a, oh, what is it? Chlorine hexafluor? No, I forgot the gas they use. That's super crazy high. It's a super crazy good insulator. I use it on like a Van de Graaff supply or Van de Graaff DC power supplies for uh, linear accelerators. Yeah, it turns out Van de Graaff generators not a horrible way to make a particle accelerator. Paying to service, but not not a horrible way. You know, if you can excuse me, Drew, I just realized I forgot to post online, besides Adafruit, that I am actually online right now. So if, you're gonna, if you don't mind giving me a second, I'm going to post that real quick. I should have probably done this before I started streaming, but I also don't have a checklist yet for this. So that will, that will happen eventually. Anyway, feel free to ask any questions about it while I do this. <laughs> OK, I'll try to be quick. Better late than never, yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. How heavy is the tank? Um, don't have a good estimate for you, but heavy. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun to carry it around. I basically have to lift up both of the handles and then kind of waddle with it. 
It's really fun mounting to the microscope because it's actually suspended on the vibration isolating frame and it's used as a counterweight for the main scan column. I didn't show that because that just it's a it's a huge pain to take it down and it just takes forever and I just didn't want to have to deal with that on the stream. Yeah, it's not the most interesting thing either. Um, it's just me basically sitting back there with a wrench for a really long period of time. <laughs> uh, I have a friend who's got a uh, gantry crane. Um, it's a, I think it's a one or two ton capacity. So if I need it, um, I've got that gantry crane to use. And hopefully when I get a lathe, or um, I'll be able to use that to move the lathe. Because so no, that's I've I've been thinking a lot about how to move heavy things recently. Just about there. Thinking about dread. No, I really. Um, let's. See. Well, I mean, I'm really looking forward to getting a lathe at some point. So I mean, I'm excited, and I don't think I'm going. I don't think it's gonna be the worst thing in the world to move, especially with a gantry crane, because I'll be able to uh, sling the bed fairly easily, and it's got a good chain hoist on it, and be able to roll it out and. Uh, I kind of have access to a trailer that's skinny enough. I'm going to have to kind of like prop one side of the lathe on the trailer, uh, put a um, dolly under that, and then I can roll the lathe kind of back on the trailer. So it'll happen eventually. <laughs> I need to set this up to be automatic. I need I, I'd use IFTTT, but that's just way too slow. I mean, you know how it does with the uh, Adafruit streams. Okay, now that's out of the way, get back to work. <sighs> no, I'm sh I, I know there's a way to do it in, um, wow, that almost tipped over. Okay, that's cool. Um, I know there's a way to do it in Google or in the YouTube platform. I just haven't set it up yet. I will. Just haven't gotten to it. Make that brighter so you can actually see it. And then let me move the chat so I can read the chat while I'm not on my computer. Okay. So all the screws are out, so it should be free. Let's check that. Oh, yeah, it's free. Okay, I need to find a little, um, I'm gonna put the screws in. Put the screws in and use game box for now because that's what I have available. I have an organizing system for the tiny parts. I just uh, have so far failed to move that out to the garage yet. 
so I should probably move that out here. Or shop, so I should probably move that out here at some point, but haven't gotten to it. <laughs> You're kind of broken. I'm curious how you have kind of broken a feather. Like, talking electronic failure, screen. No, I, I don't have a mag bowl. It's a good idea, though. Like, there's a lot of not very expensive good tools I could buy. But there's also a lot of really cool surplus hardware, and I have most of the tools I need right now to work on surplus hardware. So this part I'm going to do slowly, so I can give the oil a chance to drain. Actually, you know, let me move the camera closer for this, because this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> oh man, traces and magnet wire. That that some fun times right there. And I'm going to apologize for the uh, um, coming wobbly camera. This tripod is bad <laughs> and takes forever to shorten. But it's such a cool shot. R real quick notice. Aluminum foil and paper towels are at the ready because this thing just makes a mess. Uh, if pin nines, um, yeah, okay. I I got. I'll have to get a mag bowl. I've got a. Um, I mean, I've got a couple of small parts trays. I have the iFixit one. I have a. Um, Hundreds of these little paper bags. I just none of them are out here right now The towels are not at the, okay. You know what this is true The towels are not at the ready the towels are now at the ready Okay, let's get this thing opened up I did that wrong. Oh, come on. This... Okay, there we go. Just going to take it slowly. Trying very hard not to spill this stuff. So you can tell it just everything about this screams fun time. Oh yeah, half on a pin nine. That sounds ah oh, great. I spilled a bunch of oil down the back. Okay. You can't see it on camera, and I need to clean it up, so I'm not gonna try to move the camera. Okay, not a bunch of oil actually. Really little amount of small amount of oil. Oh. Sh okay, I see why. There's a box back here that's just draining oil a lot slower than everything else is.
Okay. That gasket looks not great. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Um, I don't want to replace it though because it's big and complicated. Oh yeah, I am pinching it though. What I need to do is find something, preferably soon, that will let me prop it up like a piece of carbon fiber. Uh, completely excessive for this. This was a um, had a bad vacuum put on it, so it's just a scrap piece. Um, structural integrity that carbon fiber should have is just not there in this particular one. Let me make sure I get it under the gasket. And I'll put that in there like that. Oh, that's making everything so much worse. Okay, I know how to fix this so quickly. Yeah, I need to do this before I tilt it anymore. You know what's funny is I've actually have fixed this thing before, and you think I remember all the lessons I learned from doing that, but nope. What happens is, is the lip at the edge acts like a drain ring, and then all the screw holes that were used for mounting just drain oil out. So if I put the screws back in the holes, it doesn't drain. But really, the stuff in this, the particular transformer oil in this one is just, it's pretty much just mineral oil. So as far as transformer oils, it's relatively, relatively mild. <laughs> yeah, insta forget. And I don't think any oil is going to come as far as these last two screws I'm putting in, but it might as well. I mean, they're not hard to put in. That's odd. Okay. Ha. Ha ha ha. Su su such a funny joke. I will say though, as far as oil spills go in this garage, the uh, whoever used it before me, I think worked on cars a lot because I just around this place I have found so many just oil filters still filled with nasty, nasty oil. The when I got this place, the the ground was just covered in like caked on like oil and sand mixes. I mean, you can still you can just see the stains all over the floor, and I spent like a day pressure washing the floor in here to get most of that off. And I still didn't quite get all of it, but. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna open the door because it's getting too hot in here.
Oh, what's odd? Um, just some labels in the capacitors. Just qu wasn't quite what I was expecting. Okay, let's try this one more time. And now we're just gonna leave it for like five minutes. Take these gloves off because these, first of all, these gloves are cheap. That's why I bought them. And they're a little bit thicker than the regular like uh, blue nitrate gloves, which is good. So a brief tour of this thing. Let's see what, what can you see here. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll pull the schematic out for this real quick. Um, this the schematic for this one that's online is for a newer version that uses a transistor, um, some transistor drive stuff. This one doesn't have that. Well, I mean it does, just not not in the tank. So I've got to um, pull those schematics. If I remember correctly, it basically uh, uses a voltage divider and feeds a. Uh, uh, so if it, it there is a. Um, this is just going off memory. It's been a while since I uh, had to really dig into this part of the scope. But there's a flyback driver that drive that uh, or the flyback driver that expects feed or that tries to keep feedback at a constant voltage. But if you try to keep feedback at a constant voltage, you want to vary the output of the Kharkov Volton or voltage multiplier. Or, or, I can't pronounce it right. Uh, you have to do some magic stuff there. So instead, what they do is they use a voltage divider built into the tank to do uh, to measure or to basically adjust the feedback voltage fed to this uh, flyback driver and doing that is how you can vary the voltage of the tank is selecting a different resistor in that voltage dividing network And this is this is a schematic I've used quite a bit before when I first got the thing because I mean I've, I've as I said I've been in here before, so it's fairly familiar with it. There we go. That's not it. That's almost it, but it's not quite it. Yeah, if this was online, this would be really easy, because I know exactly where it is online. There, there we go. Okay, high voltage. Hello, new person in the stream. Feel free to say hi in the chat. Make so you can actually see the schematics.
Okay. So the part we're focusing on today is the Karkov Voltage Voltage Multiplier. Uh, it's basically a series of diodes and capacitors uh, structured in such a way that you can uh, kind of combine or combine two capacitors, capacitors together. You can almost think of it like a uh, buck boost converter, but not exactly. So the voltage. Let's see here, I'm trying to find everything. Uh, these are the uh, relays that can switch into the voltage divider. Uh, so there's. Uh, Oh man, all oh, back. <laughs> That's too bad. Um, so these are the uh, relays, and you can see that those can be kind of, or they, those can switch in different uh, resistors into the dividing network, and then that gets provided, and then that gets sent uh, back to uh, pin one and connector J two, and that goes to the control system. And the control system is this board right here, and we're not going to go into details on this one. But basically, uh, connector J1 comes in here and goes to this box right there. At least you have a MacBook you can get $20 battery replacements for. OK, let me see what else we got here. Yeah, and then you also got some current limiting in a couple of different spots in here. A couple of diodes for um, uh, just clipping to make sure it doesn't go too negative. Oh man, ancient, ancient piece of hardware there. Surprised that's already uh, swollen up a cell. That's kind of odd. Yeah, so how does this look for draining? Not quite where I want it yet. Um, basically, the reason I had to open this thing up is that current specs are not given for these. And I could just get the theoretical values, but I would much, much rather figure out what's in there right now and replace it with something as good as it's in there right now. Uh, right now, it's foil capacitors, or it's, I think it's the uh, Paul. It's not. I want to say it's the polypropylene aluminum coated foil or foil capacitors. Uh, I don't know for certain though because they're really old. I don't know if they actually made those back then. But I'm pretty much just thinking I'm going to replace them with uh, ceramics and some modern diodes. So should work out okay. I hope. <laughs> I'm tempted to replace them with some pieces of some better spec. So increase the voltage spec a bit. I know I can't. I know I can't get capacitors that are as low of a capacitance very easily, and I, I mean I can't just like three weeks shipping on eBay, and I'm going to be ordering from hrestuff.com, and they don't have every high voltage capacitor, so I've kind of just got to get the closest value. And in a Karkov Bolton, yeah, you change the capacitance, you change some properties of it, but it doesn't matter that much, especially on a system that has active feedback like mine. Because there's a feedback loop, because this thing uh, actually controls the voltage output, uh, it's um, it's not the worst in the world to change some specs in the Karkov. You want to rebuild these schematics? Um, I mean, be my guess. I, I'm the only person who I know who has this version of the microscope. I have like one of the first ones versions of a release. Everybody else has got that second version that uses the schematics online. So it, I, I have not, I've, I've seen like four others of these ISI Super 3As, but they're all the newer version of them. And they're a better version, honestly, than mine. But no, I've got the, I've got the oldest one they've, pretty, one of the oldest ones they've made. So my, my schematics are just a little teensy bit different. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I could take a high-res picture of this and post it to the, uh, Discord. Look at that poster real quick.
It's going to be under the uh, live broadcast chat. I mean, as far as schematic pages go, this one's pretty much in perfect shape. Uh, this is not one I've had problems reading in the past at all. I can, re I can read everything on here except the Japanese, and this one doesn't have any notes that I think really matter as much to me. So I'm pretty much golden on this. This, this is well-preserved. And I've actually got two good copies of this page. Okay, photo should be posted. Now, Apple would build a thermal monitoring to a battery. They don't want to have a uh, Samsung-style incident, they, and they know the value of that. Apple's built on their brand. They know what they're going to do. They're, they're, not, they're going to try to do as much as possible not to jeopardize that. Okay, fair enough. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna be right back. I do not like smelling this transformer oil, so I'm gonna grab a fan and put it in here. Be back in like 30 seconds. Okay, I'm back. Sorry if you can hear the fan, but I... Let me turn it down some, because it's really loud. Okay, let me know if that's too much to bear. I can turn it down one more notch, but I'd like to keep it up where it is. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give... Yeah, you know, the tank looks pretty good. Okay, let's get the schematics put away. I'll keep the pages I need out. Oh, no, this stuff's, um, as I said, I tested it with the, um, infra with the infrared spectrometer. Uh, didn't match any toxic oil waveforms, which is a pretty good sign. I just, the, just has a little bit of a smell to it that kind of bugs me. So the question is, should I leave it straight aluminum foil, or should I set paper towels down on it to be an absorbent. Should probably do paper towels for an absorbent.
Yeah, I made the decision. <laughs> made the decision before you commented in, or chimed in. And we'll do a pretty hefty layer to make sure it doesn't saturate. Keeps it all right here. And just kind of a little bit of a barrier in the back. Hopefully I'll keep everything pretty well contained. I'm pretty sure it will. Okay, let's get some gloves back on. Let's get this tank up there. Foil over edge of lap. Can you? What do you mean by the last word in that? Ah, I see. But no, the tank's the tank's gonna be pretty far back. It's not hanging off the edge or anything. Oh, laptop. Yeah, no, that's actually a great idea. Um, there's the ceram wrap. There's the foil. Nice little barrier. Honestly, this thing's seen worse and its days are numbered. Ah, the o ring fell in the oil. Here we are. Okay. Pretty smart battery you got on that computer. Oh yeah, that's definitely for sure it won't dry out. I'll... Uh, this is probably the worst place to actually just leave the voltage tank, or the tank sitting. I should probably move it. Okay, this is gonna, this is gonna suck. There's no way this isn't gonna suck. Um... Put it right here. And that's the waddle. Except no handle. Ooh, that likes the slush. Make sure it doesn't slosh out. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cover that to make sure I don't get too much contaminant in it. And this ceram wrap and that aluminum foil have not for food written on them because I use them for stuff like this. So. Oh, screw that one up. Fell in. Okay, let's try this one more time. Foil might be better for this.
coils better for this. It's just as soon as I let go, because I can't. I hook it around the edge, it breaks. If I let go, it falls in. Yeah, foil work great. There we go. That'll prevent some bug from dying in it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wipe this off. W wipe this down some. Get some pit towel in here. Don't want to wipe that down until I ground it out. Okay, uh, I gotta remember my ground points are... I grounded it out to case before I pulled it out of the tank and it hasn't had that big, that much of a chance for temperature change to build up a charge. Plus the leakage current of the diodes and I also have um, diodes and... Actually this has drain resistors in it and I'm like 95% certain that there's drain resistors. Wow, mine does not have... Okay, I don't have drain resistors in this one. The schematic, the schematic online has got drain resistors. I have bypass capacitance, but I don't have drain resistors. Um, I do, however, have... Alligator clips I use for this. Yeah, I don't know who left out a discharge circuit, but the the uh, the newer version definitely has one. Oh, actually, you know what? There's an easier way of uh, discharging this because there's a ground over here I can short with a screwdriver. Remember how I did this last time. So if I short these three together. Okay, I now know that this has been discharged. So I do a couple different things. First of all, I'm going to clamp onto this side. Second of all, I'm going to clamp onto this side. And I'll be honest, uh, discharge circuits really are not that common in high voltage systems. Um, or at least like just having a resistor in there because you still get some you can get some potential across that unless you're really careful to design your resistor you can just short out the resistor with a high voltage arc so it's not that uncommon for this not for that to be the case and then the last one's going to be so I got it across which will help drain and then I, I don't think I should go to case ground though yeah I've got it across, that's what I want to do. I don't want to put a case ground in case I get potential up on ground, or up on case. Okay, let's, I'll post some photos of the caps and dyes that are using this thing. Really, it's the dads you need to figure out the specs on, because that's what I don't have.
No, discharge circuits I've seen on high voltage systems have the vast majority of the time been a normally closed uh, bar that'll close across two contacts that's held open by electromagnets when you enable the system. Yeah, I'm working on getting you a good image. I just need to uh, kind of dab the oil off because on the transistors, it's um, injection molded on the case and the oil is just um, interfering with the view of it. Focus. I think all the diodes are the same. Yeah. This is going to live broadcast chat. Okay, they're uploading. Okay, uh, let's see here. What's going to be the best course of action to take now? I just need specs on them. Um, I'm gonna. I'm not using the same caps and dads that are in here right now. I'm gonna be replacing these for uh, something from high voltage stuff. High voltage stuff's got a yeah, white cap, black dad, definitely. Uh, there's a there's one black cylinder that's a resistor. I think yeah, it's a one meg resistor. I'm trying to think of anything else I need to do while I'm in here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't really want to take it apart right now until I have the replacement parts. Yeah, I'm going to start uh, looking it up, too. E-D-16-H-I. I actually didn't get any, um, oil on my gloves. I'm impressed. Wow, can't not type. Oh, hey, check that out. It's a one, not an I. Okay. That's not English. That's close enough to English.
Yeah, it's a one. I've got the data. I've, I've got what I think is gonna be the data sheet. Sixteen H one. Uh oh, it's ready for sixteen kilovolts, eighty milliamps. Okay, yeah, no, that's doable. What kind of frequency drive can it do? No, I've got I've got mostly English. I've got uh, the specs for it are right there. I just need to find frequency. Check Discord. Checking Discord. Yeah, this is exactly what I what I got from the data sheet too. I just I don't think this is gonna need a really high frequency anything. I just want to make sure because I mean, there's a high frequency option available. Oh, 100 nanoseconds? No, I don't need 100 nanoseconds. But I do need a 16 kV because that's or I'm gonna put a 16 kV in. It's not what the spec. That's not what the 16 kV won't work. Let's go 20. Um. Is that what the data sheet called for? But that's what they are, so I want to go ahead and do for, or put these in for what they're rated, not necessarily what's specced. That's going to cost twice as much, though. Well, at least it's a high frequency diode. That's good. Uh, how many of these do I need? I need. One, two, three, four, five. That's it? Only five? Okay, that's not bad. Um, so double the cost. So spec calls for, I believe, 15. Nope, spec, call, spec calls for 16 kV. Which makes sense. You, sh you should pretty much always over-spec your um, diodes in a Kharkov vault in. Uh, any transient voltage effects will really start to wear out your diodes. Um, I've there's a Kharkov option I work with that's significantly bigger than this one. It'll do a couple milliamps at about 75,000 volts. And that thing, um, we didn't have the right diodes in it, or we had decent diodes. There are diodes that were specced for what we needed, but uh, they, they were just blowing up. And it, when a diode goes and it, it allows reverse current, it just blows up all the capacitors because you get to short through that uh, step of the ladder on it. And just blows up everything, and it's hundreds of dollars each time it does it. So we went ahead, we we overspecked our diodes because we put an oscilloscope on with a compensated voltage divider, and found some transient effects that were less than optimal. Like and by less than optimal, I mean uh, costing us hundreds of dollars. Yeah, less, less than optimal is pretty great. It's uh, right up there with um, a rapid oxidation event, a uh, rapid unscheduled disassembly. Um, let's see what else. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of good engineering phrases out there. Oh man, this is. Here, you know, what? I bet the diodes that um, we used to use are on here. Nope.
Okay, the diode, uh, the diodes that were in this, were in that machine, were this, but 100 kV. Um, the 100 kV ones cost twice as much. So you can imagine how, and that was a, oh, that had a, that had like, I think it was nine, I want to say, of those diodes. So you can imagine every time that thing went, that that's not cheap. No, it's not. How many? I remember how many stages that, that machine was. Okay, I'm just gonna have to break down and buy the more expensive ones. That's. It's still not bad. It's just more than I wanted to spend. I had to buy multiples. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll 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 try it without. Non-user initiated data destruction. That's great. Okay, capacitors. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna inspect 20 kV capacitors because they're probably about the same price, and I can get the right capacitance in them. Oh yeah, look at that right there. That's cool. That's cheap. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm gonna affect ESR a little bit, but ESR ain't the most important thing. Uh, with a Krakow Volton. How many of these do I need? Also five, okay. I might get more, I'll decide later. That is not the company you want to work with and have uh, non-user initiated data destruction. That's bad. <laughs> ah, great. Okay. I, you know what? I am just going to have to order more uh, but bypass capacitance. Like, specs actually matter. Wait. That's not... 400, okay. I didn't read the 4 in the schematics, I thought it was 700. Dang it. Okay, let's see if they've got this one in 15 k weeks. Why is the bio, the bio should be rated for more than 15 kV, I think. But. Oh no, there's some, there's some really cool stuff when you get into high voltage. How much is this going to cost? Nope. Nope, you right out of that one. Uh, let's go back to 20 kV. Nope. Nope. Ah, okay, that's, that's, that's killer. Um... Oh, okay. As long as it's the user's fault, kind of. Actually... That would be okay. Because the schematics has got... Hmm... No, that's not quite enough. Need ten thousand picofarads. Hey Phil. I am currently specking capacitors for
this thing. Uh, this is the uh, electron microscope's high voltage supply. As I talked about earlier, the capacitors uh, started to kind of fail in that. So just specking the new ones out. And I've got most of them, but there's four more I need, and I don't want to spend a bunch of money. It's probably a door. Yep, it's the door up. Oh my gosh, come on, guys. So I need about, about 10,000 picofarads. About... Well, if the... Hmm... I don't think that's exactly what I'm looking for, especially because this is bypass capacitance, so it actually matters. Ugh, I really don't want to do this, but I think I might. I could buy 20 of those. And that would fit, and that would do it. I could buy 20 of the... 1,000 picofarad ones. But I really don't want to do that. Okay, let's see if they have in film. Um... I'd have to buy four of those, and I don't want to do that. No, DigiKey... Uh, DigiKey's got... Uh, you know, I didn't check for the for this one, but they didn't have the 1,000 picofarad capacitors. Uh, or they, okay, they, they did, but they were... Um, like, eight weeks lead time, and there's no way I'm doing that. Minimum order one, but still eight, eight weeks lead time. Yeah, DigiKey gets real fun when you start doing this. And then you do this. And then you cry because they're all expensive. Nope! Not doing that. Not spending 26 bucks a cap. Yeah, especially if it's not even available. $65 if I wanted to ship same day. No way. This is crazy, but let's see if they got it in this size. Um, uh, they don't have... yeah, because the smaller ca caps aren't rated at that kind of voltage. That this is a doorknob, yep. Oh, but... I only need eight of these. Yeah, eight of these would work. Right? Twenty-two, uh, well... It'll be close. It'll be really close. Um, I need four... So there's, uh... I'll show you the schematic. So right now there's four 4700 picofarad uh, capacitors.
Okay, so it's um those wait, okay. It's those four capacitors that are in or two in parallel, two in and then both in series. Uh that I'm replacing. So It would theoretically work. It'd be close. Um, I mean, I'd be missing 300 picofarads per stage, but I'm pretty sure it'd be fine. Let me check the 20 kV one, see if we can do the same thing there. Or if I get closer. Nope. Nope. Yeah, um, no reason to go to 20 kV in these ones. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and order 10, so if I need to add the extra 2 and I can really easily. And we are going to not share screens while I estimate shipping. Wow, this side is horribly broken. Okay, um, either shipping's free, or... Doesn't like me. Okay. Share screens again. Let's see. Da -da. I how long the leads are on these, because I actually have to have long enough leads to. I wasn't telling me to estimate. Let's see, diameter 15 millimeters. That's about one. Okay, so I can count on 30 millimeter leads on each side that are usable. Grab a tape measure. That's a tape measure that doesn't have metric on it. Okay, well, you know, 2.5 centimeters per inch is close enough. Or 2.54, but. This whole thing is spaced about three inches. Hmm. I have a PCB ruler. It's just inside right now, and I don't want to go grab it. You know, I do have something else that has metric on it, or imperial. Oh yeah, metric. I mean, what do I care? It's, it was estimate 2.5, so... 4.5... Right, 4.5... Uh, 5... Uh, it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work fine.
<laughs> yeah, it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't nearly as bad today as it was yesterday, though, Phil. So you got to give it that. Dropping tape measures everywhere. <laughs> I'd say it's a worthy trade, Phil. So I think I've got all the parts I need for this. Uh, is tomorrow supposed to be hotter? I mean, at least it smokes better. That's 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 our saving grace here. Ah, oh, it is okay. Oh, and Monday and t oh wow, next four days are all really hot. Ugh, <laughs> that's not fun. Well, we'll see how many streams I do, and if I'm going to do streams, it's going to be late night, because it gets hot out here during the day. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do on the high voltage right now, or if I should um, go and just drop it back in the tank. Oh, it's Daniel who's watching. Daniel, that's, that's entirely unnecessary to tell me right now. That, that is not information that at this moment, while I am doing a live stream, I need to be aware of. I mean, you can go ahead and text it to me, and I can see it later, but right now... Before I say hi to Daniel, and make as much fun of him as you'd like... Just put in thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I don't think it's either. Maybe slightly. Embarrassing. I'm sure it's, it's, it's. I think it's a typo somewhere. So we can deal with typos later, Daniel. Can't think of anything else I really need. That's cool. I don't really want to keep dealing with the smell of the high voltage tank, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the um, tank. I don't need to bother screwing it up because I'm just going to get it out again to uh, put the diodes or the replacement parts in when they get here. But I've got the information I need off the tank. So I should be good to go. Let me just once it over real quick. Yeah, good to go. Okay, let's get this thing assembled again so I can turn the fan off so it's not so cold in here. Um, let's see, let me get the camera set up for this.
I'm a little overexposed slightly so you can see the details of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'll take the grounding clamp off last. First, I need to get new gloves on. And after this, I think I'll work on the uh, PCB for the acquisition, acquisition system some. Ah, oh, I got deal with the stupid O-ring. You know what? I'm not gonna bother moving that tank just to... for you guys to see, but I'll move the camera. Uh, how do I want to deal with the O-ring? I don't really want to get pliers oily. Let's see if I can do it just from the edge. What's funny is this O-ring is actually way, way longer than it was originally. Like, you can see what happens to it. It's all wavy. Holly White fell in. Yeah, there's no good way of putting this back together. Okay, I released the grounding clamps. Clamp one and clamp two are free. And here comes the assembly. Gosh. Yeah, it's that big. That big bump in it that's causing it to do this. I might have to trim this down. Alright, no, we'll do this. Oh my gosh, this thing just falls on its own. Wow. <sighs> okay, this thing is at some point going to have to be replaced with something that will actually withstand the oil. Oh, I have voltage tank. <laughs> yeah, screw it. It's me. That that section. That that section's gotta be replaced. I can't get it in. It's too long. On that any now. Let's just get it closed up. What I'll do is I'll just take a I'll take a splice out of the middle so it's short enough, and then secure it back together. Make it easier to soak up some. Actually, that's probably not going to do anything now that I think about it. Well, no, it will. It'll help get some more of it up.
Yeah, no, that that helped. And it's just like ninety cents a bottle. Thank you for reminding me to take the plastic wrap off the paper towels, Drew. I'll leave the fan on for like five more minutes. I'll turn that off so it's not so cold in here. But I don't need this anymore. Yeah, you can tell. Hey, I made a capacitor. Actually, you know what? That actually. <laughs> that would actually work, too. That's. Uh, no, it wouldn't, because I pulled it over on the top and bottom. That's, that's still kind of funny. Okay. Let's do some keycad. Keycad. Cad of some sort. So, for those of you who are interested, here's the schematic we got so far. Big thing, it looks bowl shaped. Uh, probably the uh, fume extractor. Okay, so we got signal in, uh, goes uh, through level shifter, then uh, Unity gain or Unity baseline adjustment, or I guess not level shifter, just the amplifier uh, Unity baseline adjustment. Uh, that gives me signal out. Signal out goes to the TNCLC uh, for the logic. I've got uh, diode clipping, inverter. Then inverter can go either to the TNCLC or because I'm using a six-channel chip. I went ahead and put some jumper resistors in that will take it to another inverter. So if I just want to do something different interrupts, I have that option available in hardware, not software. Uh, let's see here. Power input with decoupling and LC circuit. Um, I should probably add another just pad for capacitor above the LC to act as a tank capacitor. Uh, but that won't be hard to do. I've got my BNC inputs for signal. And then I got some LEDs. And I need to replace this op amp with a comparator because comparators are lousy op amps. So, um, let's start with the comparator. Uh, I want that. Alright, head digi-key open. Uh, Drew, if you have any recommendations for a comparator you like that will take uh, plus minus 15, let me know. Hmm, let's see. Value range.
Dun, 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 dun. Current output. Eighteen. Yeah, eighteen miles should be enough for a uh, completely decent just to. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Wow. And it's giving me a package. Yeah, we'll go with the um, LM three ninety three DT. And it's cheap. Like cheap. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if I have a comparator already. I do. See, what was that? The LM393? Hey, look at that! Ah, uh, but I think I have the LM393 Dual. Oh, nope, that is a... So I can go ahead and change that to B unit. And then delete those. And there should be a direct replacement. Did I get that right? Yeah, I did. Cool, so that's set. Um, we need a footprint for this. I think it's okay. ADSO, okay. That... What? You know what I know this is odd about KeyCAD sometimes? Is that you don't always get all of the footprints. Unless you use C P V C or P V P C B. So that's loading. I am going to turn the fan off and close the door. up in here because all the bricks are warm. Okay, is there a difference between SOIC and SO? So it looks like it's the same. Oh, yeah, it's the same. Okay, that's convenient. Um, let's see, I've got some more passives to define. I 
these are going to be all Let's see how Let's go spec um, I need to figure out the pads. I'm gonna need, I'm probably gonna need to design custom pads for the test points I've chosen which is okay Point one five by point zero eight. I'm assuming, yeah, okay. I doubt I'm going to get that lucky and have that available, but we will find out. Yeah, there's no test. Okay, let's check out wire pads. No. Let's see. Probably design my own pad. It's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Remember how to do this, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, let's move all this stuff out of the way first. Drop a pad down. We will... This will be really easy actually. Um, Edit pad, I want a SMD, I want a rectangular, and the size in millimeters is going to be whatever the 519 layout is, so 3.8 and 2.03. Nope, oh, that's, oh, I need to change that. Zero those out. Make sure that looks right, that looks right. And because it's only one pad, that's pretty easy to do. Cool. And then um, I need to add. I, need, I don't remember how, how silkscreen works in KiCad. My reference down.
Yeah, I don't want that to actually render. We'll see if there's everything I need. That should be everything I need, though. custom. Okay, now I'm going to need to go back to my footprint editor. Nope, not footprint editor. I need to go to assign a footprint and then I'm going to need to remember how to add a library. Because I did this yesterday, actually. Probably the at least not completely boring watching me remember how to use KaiKen? KaiKen? Did I do it in here? Oh, I think I did it in here. Yeah. This is where I did it. Didn't show up. It shows up at the bottom usually. Okay, so I, I shouldn't have selected this project only. I think that's what it was last time. Unless I didn't save it in the library. You know, I probably never saved it. And it's not going to let me do anything until that's closed. Let's just change something to see if that's it. Oh, this is okay. I forgot about this. Um, I don't think I need any solder mask clearance actually in this. Don't 
Don't need any solder paste clearance. And pad clearance will be set if, yeah, global values, okay. Drill, I don't need that. Copper layers. Yeah, okay, so that's all, that's actually all good. Uh, set active library. Yeah, let's put this in wire pads, why not? Yeah, that's probably wise because it had spaces in it. You know we can't have space it. Okay, fine. We will Um, I thought I changed my directory. Or my library. Oh, because I hadn't added the library. Okay, I gotta remember how to add a library to this then. I bet if I close this and reopen it, it'll show up. No. Okay, so let's see. What's different? I mean, okay, the footprint's there. No, really? No? Yes. There we go. I'm curious. I I uh I should probably add some drawings to it, but I can do that later. Make it look all pretty. Okay, now I can do this. Okay, let's go. Okay, I thought it wasn't showing up there for a second.
Okay, so that's all the test points are now set. Let's do... Oh, let's, let's spec a power connector. I really... I kind of like and kind of don't like specking power connectors. Uh, Drew, if you got any recommendation for power connectors, not a bad time. I need three connectors in it. Um, and this is gonna, one side is going to be bolted to the back of the SEM, so it needs to be panel mount, and then the other one is going to be on my PCB. Um, so I'm probably going to go with... Not mean to click that one. Oh, this is all AC stuff, isn't it? Um, no, NEMA. Right, I can do NEMA. Oh, I love NEMA. Um, is there? But this is not the right type of NEMA. I like the NEMA specs in general. Just I need to know what they are. Just click randomly and see what it brings up. I'm curious. Okay, I think all these are going to be the standard wall socket ones. I'm guessing. Yeah, I use barrel connectors, but I've got to have. Um, I I need three connectors, not two. But I'm pretty sure power entry is going to just give me all the stuff that's commonly used with uh, mains voltage. So let's do... You know, let's go to Adafruit and see what Adafruit uses. Because Lamore usually does a really good job at specking this sort of stuff. Am I just not seeing this? X oh, XLR would be uh, probably a bit overkill, but yeah, XLR would actually, it, that'd work. Uh, I just know XLR is a little bit expensive, and I gotta um, get a thicker cable too. I've used DB9 for this sort of stuff before. It doesn't, uh, it's not, that's not too bad, especially because DB9 is pretty cheap. I could spell. Could use that stuff they use for servo. Okay, so they put connectors under cable. Um, yeah, let's go back to DigiKey. Kind of power pumping through this. Uh, plus minus 15 volts in ground and Current draw is low, let's put it that way. I don't know exactly how low, but pretty low. Yeah, you know, this really is just a case of too many options. I do have a heavy duty connector.
Oh, these are just, wow. Okay. Starting to learn here. Rather have just solder connections though. I need the I need the receptacle for that. So many choices. I just want to make it good. It's not Keystone, of course not. Um, Yeah, no, this XLR is, I just, I just don't want to spend the money on XLR is all. And you get it in larger quantities, it's not as bad. But small quantity, quantities, it's not, not fun. Why am I looking at DIN rail? DIN's cool, I wish I could use DIN more for things. Hmm. That would take me down a rabbit hole. Just out of curiosity, I think these are all two, uh, no, these are one pin each. It's all solar works. And board and board. That'd be kind of funny. Slap the board on the back. Okay, here we are. A photo or any in stock would be nice. Yeah, I would just use I would just use barrel if it wasn't for the three pin requirement. You know, I couldn't do no. All right, LGHs. 
Oh, that looks, that looks promising. I don't necessarily need just three positions. I could go with, like, let's go like three to 12. Oh, are those solder? Those are solder, that's great. I think we found a connector. How much money does it cost? No. <laughs> huh. Huh. 20 bucks to 800 bucks a connector. Not what I'm looking to spend. Okay, LGH is apparently for high voltage. Hmm. I wish I had use for those. Oh, right, that's not the... Sent the thing in Discord. I don't wanna, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I recognize these types of connectors. Um, I just don't wanna order from Alibaba. I wanna order from DigiKey so I get in a couple of days, but I'll look for this on DigiKey. You know, I haven't checked out round connectors yet. I should probably check out round connectors. Circular connectors? We'll try circular connectors, because I bet it's more than I was thinking it was. Yep, it's more than I was thinking it was. Okay. Um, number of positions, anything between Three and let's go with like six. See if there's anything cool there. Um, we want active, we want bulk, cut tape, tube, apply filters. Uh, we want chassis mount flange, panel mount, front rear side, bulk, and any of these will work. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and just go for three because there's so many options here. I'm a fan of solder cups, but Julie, let's see if I can find a certain style. I like push twist, oh no, not available, okay. Wow. Okay. Reverse bayonet lock. What type of connector is a reverse bayonet lock? Well, none of them have photos, so that's an indication. It's probably not that popular. Okay, get on board with this. Just for sake of being thorough, let's see what other types of mount, nope, 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 I want to go back. I want
I don't really want threaded. I think bayonet lock's probably gonna work pretty dang well, but we'll check what the other ones are. Oh, well, <laughs> there's XLR. Okay. We'll do bayonet lock so that it's a quick twist in, which I kind of like. Um, let's see here. I'm going to want... How is this going to get this down? Oh, female sockets. Guess just start looking. Try that out. Uh, eight bucks a pop. Let's not try that out. Yeah, looks like I've got a system to go with. I think that's it right there. I want solder cup. I want plug. A little bit interesting. A 
series is this? This is the Mini Connex. We'll just toss two of these in the cart for now. So work, and then I'm going to look up mill spec. Everything else I have on the Microsoft mill spec. I know I can get mill spec three plane or um. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I need to get in, at some point. I'm going to need to go get din dinner. Oh, well, thank you, DigiKey, for not directing to not directing me to this great page earlier. This is actually really nice. This is shockingly nice. Okay, let's find something cool here. Yeah, I know, right? If you want something smaller, I'll see what the dimensions on these actually are. Oh, I'm glad they have a note from the CEO and a catalog connectors. Or a connector catalog. Oh, just give me the diameter. Yeah, I'm gonna find something cheaper.
You know, it's probably just some of the selections I made. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that because I messed it up one time. I'm going to cause a lot of damage to a lot of way more expensive components is the thing. Yeah, I don't like the idea of threaded. Let's do bayonet lock. Okay, those look nice. Okay, fine, I'll spend money on this. Where did I go wrong? Okay, the plugs are cheap, but the connectors are 14 bucks a piece. You know what? Screw it. I've got the perfect solution. Wow, this is a thing too? That's cool. Uh, but I think it went wrong in deciding I wanted a really good, really, really good connector when I only need a good connector. I mean, hey, the SEM works, and the SEM honestly wasn't that expensive. I'm just choosing way too good of a power connector. I can't believe I'm going to use D-sub. Oh, I bet you can get 3-pin D-sub. You can totally get 3-pin D-sub. And it's totally not that expensive.
Wow. Okay. Okay, so this is a thing that exists. That's good. Two bucks for going with that. <sighs> Retro hardware to the rescue. Wait, I should have gone to. That include the pens? Uh, it probably doesn't include the pens in the female one. No, it's got to. It'd be insane if it didn't. I don't think it does. Okay, that's something I'll start out later. Oh, well, uh, there's the pins. Hmm. Should probably specify that it had solder cup. I need to figure out what pin to use for these things. Let's just grab the male side real quick. Oh, you know, I wanted a socket. Okay, there, that was the problem. That was totally the problem. Okay, there we go. Now, now we're where I want to be. Ah, uh, not with price though. Okay, um, let's wait. No, potentially still a price. Hmm. 
Not the first. Well, okay, come on. I can make this a lot cheaper if I want a 9-pin D-sub. A lot cheaper. I'll do it. I'll go with 9-pin. Yeah, we'll do 9-pin. Okay, that's, that's okay. There's a D-sub micro, what's that look like? Oh, no, not, not doing that route. Okay, um... I want solder cup, because solder cups are cool. How do I still have a micro? Excuse me. And you know, there's a whole bunch of them available, which is generally a good indication. Oh, but the, it's got punch pins, and I don't like punch pins. I want them. Um, yeah. Good pins. The readable label. Now I just want one of these. And then if I'm lucky. I'll be able to find one that's through hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Can I get through whole right angle? Or is that not a thing? Gotta be a thing. It doesn't do you know, we'll find a different we'll find a different through hole right angle. So the question is, do I want panel mount through hole? Yeah, I'll get panel mount through hole. And my case is gonna be 3D printed, so it's gonna be a little bit thick, so I want kind of an extended. I probably don't want panel mount through hole. Probably the right choice, yeah. That's the right choice. See if I can get it pretty far, or kind of far away on the through hole side of things. Like that, that's cool. Yeah, it's cheap, but let's, um... Oh, um... I usually go through my card at the end and add kind of extras where I see fit. Um, but I'm getting, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting different ones for each side, as you can probably tell by now. There's my mouse, there's my mouse. Okay, let's start looking for some superficial features. I want to be able to easily read the numbers. Uh, 
And it's nice if I can access most of the um, some of the pins from up top. How is this even being organized? Is it alphabetical and digit? No? Okay. Oh, let's get active. I think I'm going to go with the cheapest one. It looks pretty nice because those are removable, which I like. And I'm going to bet I do not have a DB9 cable that I have not butchered up yet. This hit 50 bucks. What's what's cost me money here? Oh, right, these stupid power connectors. I was gonna say. Any else extra in here right now? No, I don't. No. Okay, cool. This is gonna be uh, maybe that's not gonna super cheap. Let's do this. Six feet. I could do six feet. Under six feet. Okay, so I'm gonna need to change those connectors to DB9. No, oh, that's the paddock editor I want. That editor. I'll decide on DB9 pinout later. Uh, what else? Oh, I need my board mounted BNC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this will be the last, last component I spec tonight so I can go eat dinner. Yeah, I know. Strange.
These really quickly get expensive. It's just like a perfectly acceptable connector. Eh, that's pretty fast. We'll do some more components. Ah, I really don't. Actually, I don't want to do any passives right now. I'll do passives later. Hmm. I have to design footprints for my potentiometers. Find footprints for everything else. Yeah, I'll do this later. Well, anyways, uh, with that, I am going to call that a night. Thanks for sticking with me. Hope you get your uh, MacBook repaired and um, find your, oh, what was it, uh, broken TFT shield, a pin eye or something? Yeah. Hope you find all that, and I will see you possibly tomorrow.